For nearly half a century now, the world has listened to Keith Richards' guitar and Mick Jagger's voice. Now Richards is letting his own voice be heard. Anthony Mason now with a Sunday profile. Good evening. It's sometimes said there are two Keith Richards. They're French, French Bulldogs. <laughs> Do you ever feel that there's this other guy, the mythological Keith Richards, who's kind of trailing around alongside him? Uh, he, he's, uh, he's on a ball and chain. He's <laughs> an image. He uh, you know, carries a long shadow. Yeah, I love the guy dearly, but I'm still trying to find out who the hell he is. And, uh... He is Keith to his fans, once dubbed the world's most elegantly wasted human. Survivor of countless drug busts, guitarist for the biggest rock band on the planet. And one half of Jagger and Richards. One of the most successful songwriting teams of the past half century. How would you describe your professional partnership? I've never considered myself or him professional, quite honestly. <laughs> and then there's, well, the other Keith. I get the sense that you're actually, in many ways, a very traditional guy. Yes, this is what I keep trying to tell everybody. <laughs> That's the one we met in Connecticut. At the house he built 20 years ago to raise his two daughters with his wife, Patty Hanson. Oh, the lemons, look at these. Wow. At home, he's the 67-year-old guitarist with the green thumb. Hand grenades. <laughs> Who's responsible for these? That's me. You? Yeah, it's amazing, really, isn't it? This is in my spare time I do this. You grow lemons. Yeah. But then you realize the two Keiths are really one. Well, I've, I've always planted things. I used to grow weed, but I was never there for the harvest. You know? <laughs> if Keith Richards didn't exist, one critic wrote, rock and roll would have to invent him. And in a way, it has. In his best-selling memoir, Life, he dispels some of the myths. Like the legendary tale, he once had a total blood transfusion in Switzerland. Yes, I, I created that myth. So you didn't actually have your blood drained because and replaced? Because people wanted to believe that. I, mean, I wouldn't swap this blood for nobody. <laughs> and confirms others. Uh, the snorting of your father's ashes. which I, It is true. Mm. You did, in fact, do it. I ingested my ancestor, yes. Uh, it was an accident, he says. He planned to bury his father's ashes beneath an oak tree he was planting. But as I took the lid off the box, fine bits of my dad flew onto the table. You know, like powder, you know. And I can't, honestly, I could not resist. I just scooped him up there, took out a straw, and I said, see you, Dad. And I did a little line of him. Yeah, I did that. And, uh, and the rest of them is around this oak tree, which is growing incredibly well. <laughs> I see you're still smoking. How many vices do you have left? You've sort of whittled them away over the years. Yeah, I'm down to the precious few now. Yeah. Do you miss any of them especially? Not really, because I've done you can't go back. And uh, I mean, God, I used to love heroin. <laughs> but what junkie didn't? Keith may be the only one who isn't surprised he's still here. I have an amazing... Uh, constitution. Constitution, an incredible system, an immune system, and so, you know, which is... I've always known, but it's convincing other people. You said at one point that part of the reason that you took drugs was to hide. Yeah, it's to get away from uh, all of the unnecessary things about show business uh, that seem to be important to show business people that uh, I've really never felt myself part of.
Busted repeatedly over the years, Richards once said, I didn't have a problem with drugs, only with policemen. You've often talked about no regrets, nothing. For you, what was, what was the toughest thing you faced? Uh, the toughest thing I faced was my son dying. Two months old, I'm on the road and I get a phone call. You know, your son's dead. In 1976, Tara, his third child with longtime girlfriend Anita Pallenberg, was found dead in his crib. You do say in the book, you feel like you deserted your post. Yeah, it's supposed to be there, right? Yeah. But I wasn't there. By the end of the decade, Keith had finally cleaned up his act. But for much of the 80s, the Stones did not tour. Jagger wanted to go off on his own, and Richards felt betrayed. You were pretty tough on him during that period. Yeah, well, he was pretty tough on me as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm leaving. You know. Oh, thanks, pal. He had set himself a separate agenda mm -hmm. that uh, didn't include any of us. And, and riding on the Stones' fame to do it. And I thought that was a cheap shot. In the book, you basically say, we're not really friends anymore, but we're, we'll always be brothers. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't, I, I, the, the reason I say that probably is that we don't see a lot of each other when we're not working. Mm -hmm. Do you wish you still did? I would prefer it to be closer as, as guys, uh, you know, but I don't like uh, uh, to socialize in the way that Mick does. Mick probably finds me far too serious and idealistic. Yesterday don't matter if it's gone. Mick and Keith. It's like a marriage with no divorce, Richards once said. Their child is the Rolling Stones. There's a certain chemistry between Mick and myself that just clicks. You don't know quite how, and sometimes it doesn't. And there's many times, you know, I think, Mick, I've got the greatest thing ever for you. And he goes, oh, I hate it. <laughs> Obviously, you have to believe in that chemistry because you keep going back to it. Oh, yes, I, I do. I do I, my job is to turn Mick on. Mm -hmm. If I can turn Mick on, then Mick can turn the world on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but something has to spark him. I don't know if I could handle it.